Hi, I'm Dr. Jonathan Zelkin, board certified plastic surgeon from Newport Beach, California. Today, I wanna to talk about my vision of facial harmony and why certain shadows exist in the aging face. So first and foremost, having fat on your face is a really good way of hiding a lot of these shadows. And that's why we say when you lose weight or if we perform liposuction, as was done in this case, you can actually look older even if you look skinnier and the procedure was performed well. Here's an example of a patient who lost a lot of weight on top of a lower facial liposuction procedure. And although there's no contour irregularities associated with uneven liposuction, and in fact, radiofrequency skin tightening was used in this case, ongoing weight loss makes it a lot easier to see the underlying contours and shadows. I wanna talk about every shadow that you see in this picture, what they mean, and how we treat them. I'm gonna start from the left and go to the right. You can't really see a shadow, but some of you who look very carefully may see a little bit of a white reflex right here. There's actually a convexity that comes out towards us. This is the parotid gland. It's a salivary gland. And that salivary gland is very important on day-to-day -day functions in terms of allowing you to eat food and not have a dry mouth. In certain disease conditions, and I see it a lot more often in men, the parotid gland can become swollen and make the face look wider, and in, in severe cases, give you a shadow that basically is a curvilinear shadow in front of your ear. The next shadow you'll see here is a line that extends from the earlobe and goes all the way down to the chest. And this is called your sternocleidomastoid muscle. Sternocleidomastoid muscle. There's basically three sides to this triangular muscle and there's two heads. And this is a very attractive feature and the shadow and triangle it confers, in my opinion, is a very attractive shadow in the right configuration. Nothing we would do about this. In fact, I try to create this shadow in many of my cases. The next thing that we're gonna see is a, another white reflex. And when I say white reflex, I'm talking about a bulge outward. You can't really see it in two dimensions, but right here, there's a bulge. And what this represents, like the product gland, is another salivary gland called the submandibular gland. And although some surgeons, including myself in certain cases, will resect this submandibular gland, it's typically better to actually secure it to the jawbone or mandible. We call it a pexy. And when you do that, you can make it a lot less noticeable. Another good way of concealing this and making it a lot less noticeable is to tighten the neck muscles during a facelift or a neck lift. Another shadow that we all see and recognize here is a continuation from the corner of the mouth all the way down to the jawbone. And really, if you can imagine an imaginary circle right here, this is what we commonly know as the jowl. The jowl is excess skin and fat that tends to fall forward due to gravity and time. And there's a hard stop right here. And there's a retaining ligament from your jawbone to your skin that doesn't allow this to continue forward so it falls over and casts a shadow that we call a marionette line. I treat this with liposuction and skin tightening and when that's not enough, it's time for a facelift. The next fullness that we're gonna see lies outside the corner of the mouth and it's right here. This is what I call the perioral mound. This is a very challenging mound and it's also very common in younger patients and patients of Chinese and Asian ethnicity. This fullness out here often confers a downward appearing slope to the corner of the mouth and it bothers a lot of patients. What I've found works best for this is some degree of radiofrequency skin tightening and liposuction. As a standalone procedure, this can be performed through a small hole inside the corner of the mouth. As you continue upwards towards the nose, there's another fullness right here and this casts a shadow called the nasolabial fold. This is called the nasolabial fold. It's, a, it's basically a, a, a mound of skin and fat. And this is a little bit more challenging because oftentimes there's not enough fat to meaningfully reduce this. Just like down here, there are ligamentous attachments from the corner of your nose to the corner of your mouth that force this to kind of fall over. In my opinion, the best treatment for this is either filling in this defect in front of the, in front of the nasolabial fold, or again, when you're performing a facelift, doing a deep tightening called a smas plication or a smasectomy with repair and then draping the skin backwards and this will not make this go away but it'll make it a lot softer. What many of you uh, know me for is buckle fat pattern removal and that would 
this is this white reflex that you can't see on a side view and you've, a lot of my videos talk about how buckle fat pad fullness doesn't really show through in pictures. It's right here. And if you have fullness right here and nothing else, buckle fat pad removal is probably all uh, that you need. Another common uh, complaint is the masseter muscle. The masseter muscle you can't really see here, but in some thin patients like Jennifer Garner and others, you can see a line basically extending from the cheekbone down to the corner of your jawbone. When you have that muscle, it makes your face look wider, sort of like the parotid gland does, but more further forward. This is often treated, for example, with Botox, and that'll give you some slimming in the back of your face. But when you treat this and this becomes smaller, you'll understand that the jowls become bigger in comparison. So this is why considering all these moving parts is important. Buckle fat pad removal alone typically doesn't disrupt facial harmony too much, but I did see one patient who felt like this part of her face became more noticeable because of the harmony between the buckle fat pad excess and the perioral mound weren't necessarily addressed. And then last but not least, we talk about everything else over the face. So the subcutaneous fat envelope will cover, off, will cover up a lot of these shadows. Once that subcutaneous fat is gone and you look a lot thinner, then we've got to reckon with the skin and the visibility a lot of these underlying structures uh, confers. And the best way of doing this, again, is a facelift. The facelift scar will continue from the, uh, basically, the temporal tuft across the ear, across the earlobe, and down into the hairline. When you tighten the neck muscles, eliminate the jowls, in some cases reduce the buccal fat pad, liposuction the perioral mound, perform some degree of tightening of the deeper structures of the face, and you address any other issues um, by, for example, adding volume into the upper face, that's when you can achieve a superlative result because you're addressing all of these moving parts in one operation. Here's a nice little recap of this video. This is a patient who came to me, she's younger, and she's unhappy with some of the shadows in her neck. And specifically, she's bothered by this band in the midline of her neck, as well as some fullness under her chin, her jowls, some fullness behind her jowls, and ultimately lack of a jawline or jawline definition. And so she wanted to have a sharper angle between her chin and her neck, and also to eliminate a lot of these unsightly shadows. And so this can all be accomplished, as with her case, by a facelift. And so this is an early result. You can see that the scars are still red, um, but the facelift allows me to not only tighten the neck muscles, which gets rid of that extra banding in the midline, but also allows me to cover up or push up some of the other bulges like the submandibular gland. When you pull the extra skin out and take out a little bit of that fat, not only do you soften the folds called marionette lines, uh, as well as the nasolabial folds, but you can also eliminate a lot of the unsightly shadows. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope this pictorial helps.